Hello, and welcome to the Beastly Artifact. This is a once in a full moon podcast created by two familiars who met in the underworld and, against all odds, decided to keep talking to each other. I'm your ghost, Alex, joined always by my co ghost, who has more watch leader videos on YouTube than days left on this earth. <laughs> I'm. <coughs> <coughs> The poison moves fast once ingested. The depraved killers of today are less than a rotting zombie corpse by tomorrow. We're here to slow down and recover our breaths while the footsteps get closer in order to make sense of the screaming voices in our heads and demonic images burned into our retinas. To that end, we've each chosen an artifact from the web to discuss together. Our comments are, are our own and are not associated with any institution. The show will contain explicit language and themes. The show notes are your only hope for salvation. Justin, what's spooking you today? My artifact this week is The Case of the Phantom Caller, which is episode number 104 from the podcast Reply All. It came out on September 7th, 2017. The podcast basically tells the story of someone named Jody who is receiving mysterious phone calls. And basically, um, the podcast has a couple different sorts of episodes that it puts out, and this one is what they call one of their super IT um, requests, where they try and solve a, a tech, uh, some sort of technological issue. And so this one is basically, you know, why is this woman receiving these mysterious phone calls? And she's receiving them, I'll say, to, like, her, like, a work number, like, a 1-800 work number uh, of the place where she works. And so she picks them up, and at first they start off just as what they describe as horribly loud feedback. Um, and then there's also some song instrumentals and things like that mixed in. Um, so it's just kind of like noises or maybe some background music or something. But then as time goes on, the sounds get a little bit weirder. One, they say, quote, as if a stranger somewhere out in the world is just holding the phone up to wherever they are. Um, and so you hear different sorts of either nature sounds or one's like a basketball game sound storm warnings yeah yeah I, well yeah i feel like that one's one like the creepier ones for sure for sure but i think uh she I, eventually she stops picking up the phone so i think uh, they do mention that before they get to the storm so at, at some point they become voicemails which is why they they have the recording so when you listen to the episode you get to listen to the to the sounds but it's like the one they play from the basketball game, you just hear like a boy talking and, and to a, presumably what sounds like his mom, and but you hear some like sneakers squeaking you know, and and so it kind of sounds like a basketball game in that way. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the 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 storm siren one, which it could it, it it might be a storm siren, it might be a train or something, but it, it definitely sounds like a storm siren the first time you hear it. But you just hear birds chirping, some insects buzzing around, which which they point out that's a little bit off-putting that you know how can you why is this phone picking up like an insect like how close is it but then you just hear if you ever heard like a hurricane siren or something it just starts you know ramping up and getting louder and louder and almost like you're at like a nuclear testing site someone sort of describes that so it's just very like how is how's a phone picking this up like where is this coming from it's just very strange mm -hmm. um pj vote is the one telling the story he's talking to his colleague alex goldman um, and and alex says quote this is actually distressing it feels bad and the guy you just kind of do get like a this visceral feeling um but yeah the the calls are coming at all times of the day um and all times of week as well they're just constantly coming in there's some more one sounds like a middle of a town square a laundromat office sounds conversations there's one that they said sounds like someone is performing a criminal background check on someone uh, and so they start to you know try and figure out what's going on they offer several theories uh, one jody wonders if like the nsa is doing some sort of like wiretaps that are getting forwarded to her phone somehow so that's the that's one, like the first theory they float out but the mm -hmm. one thing that they notice is that all the calls come from different phone numbers. You can see the caller ID and they all they're they're not coming from the same number, they're coming from different numbers. So PJ decides to start calling 
all these numbers. He gets through to a bunch of people, but they're all confused as to you know why he's calling. They they say that they haven't been calling this number. They weren't anywhere near um, where these sounds would imply they were. They call someone a woman where the who had the number associated with the basketball game, and she said she was nowhere near any sort of basketball or anything like that. And so a lot of people are interested, but they're ultimately confused as to what's going on. One of the theories is that you know all the callers, including Jody, are using what they call voice over IP. IP is a stands for a longer acronym, but but they just call it VoIP. And so basically what it means is that they're all using the internet to make their phone calls. So they're, they speculate if that has something to do with what's going on. And so PJ calls Precision Interconnect, which is the company that Jody uh, gets her VoIP through. And it takes a while to get through to them, but eventually he gets through to the woman that runs it. And she speculates that this might have something to do with funding global terrorism. However, Jody's phone bill is normal, so that theory is some, uh, seems like it can't really be viable. But the, the woman, whose name is Harley, gives PJ another clue, basically saying that the fact that all the numbers are different implies that this is being done intentionally. Like, whatever's going on, someone is trying to cover their tracks by intentionally putting in fake numbers, because there's not really another way that these fake numbers would just randomly sort of generate. So PJ calls an expert, Dave Maynard, who says that this is simple. He says there is a, quote, logical answer and that he'll take care of it. And then two hours later, he calls back and he's just completely confused. He has no idea what's going on. He thought he knew and it turns out this is way deeper than he thought. And he proposes a totally new theory, which is that all these calls are part of one big chopped up story, and that if you can piece them together in the right way, that will sort of reveal the mystery. And he comes up with this because two of the, at least two of the calls seem to be sort of different parts of the same basketball game. And so it seems like this is coming from something larger that someone chopped up. But then they have this quote right after that, it says, Dave's fascination with these recordings and my fascination with these recordings and Jody's fascination and your fascination, we've been eating bait in somebody's trap. Dave uh, corroborates that. He says, well, it's so weird to me is I see the beauty and the genius of the bait, but the trap is totally invisible to me. And then after that, Dave has to go do this job in Ukraine and he disappears and he's gone and he can't help them anymore. So PJ keeps trying to call other people who might know something about this, uh, but he can't find anything until he meets a man named James Brown. And here I'll say, if you don't want spoilers, there's going to be spoilers from here on out for this episode, which I recommend that you listen to because it's pretty good, I think. So that's your warning. Yeah, so he meets James Brown. James has 10,000 of these recordings, and so he's pretty familiar with the problem. And one of the things he points out is that these calls only go to 1-800 numbers. And so, you know, now that he's working with PJ, he sort of takes action. He sets up 20,000 one 800 numbers and starts monitoring all of them. Basically, how it goes, and this is for real your last chance, uh, links, in the, <laughs> links in the show notes. Uh, basically, what's going on is, so if you call a one 800 number, you don't have to pay anything, but the person who receives a call does, and they pay their provider, which would say be which would be like AT and T, for example. And but that provider also has to share the money with anyone else who helps make the connection. So if that if your call connects to a Sprint tower and then AT and T tower, and then the person you're trying to call, you know AT and T may be that person's provider, but Sprint helped make the call, so AT and T split some money with Sprint. And so what probably happened is that is a smaller company, smaller than AT&T or Sprint or something. Um, uh -huh. Someone, you know, went to them and said, I'm going to place X number of wildly high number of phone calls through you and share. And then uh, just in exchange, you know, whatever money you get from that, just share with me. And the, and the catch is that the longer the call lasts, the more money the receiver has to pay, which is why the calls are probably so creepy sounding. Uh, which Jody sort of admits that she was 
you know, listening for long stretches of time mm-hmm. to the calls. But they seem to like progressively sort of get creepier and like more, you know, interesting. Yeah, and so then the it ends of PJ talking to an FBI agent that. James is also working with, and the FBI agent pretty much says that they're going to catch the person. I couldn't find any update to the story if they actually caught him or not. I was I was quickly trying to look, but I couldn't find any evidence one way or another. But in any case, that is the artifact. Definitely check it out if you haven't. Yeah. So. Uh, what what were your sort of thoughts as you were listening to it, Alex? Did you have any theories as to what was going on as it was playing, or two things? One, it was like way over my head as far as like the like coming up with these schemes, but they kind of kept saying it was very convoluted. I mean, once it was explained, it seemed pretty. It seems like somebody that like if you know what you're doing, like you're very like you're like oh I can definitely make money doing this. Like, it seems like a good it's a good grift. I like this guy. Whoever it's doing this, <laughs> it was fine by me. I had no, I like, I guess I would have thought, I mean, it seemed like money would be the motivation in some capacity, but just, it's, I would have no idea how you, like, I don't know how 800 numbers work. I don't know how toll free things work when you like you pay for phone bills. So it was uh, informative. And some, like you said, some of those recordings were a little, uh, I'm, you know, I might listen to the basketball game just to see who wins, but like, it was, <laughs> yeah, it depends how long, I mean, I guess they'd have to go on as long as they could so that people could stay on the phone. But like, I mean, usually I'd be like, hello, hello, and be like, I'm like, all right, fuck you, and just like hang up, but, you know, sometimes you get them for 20 minutes, and leave board at work, just saying like, all right, well, you know, gotta follow Proto, <laughs> so, before I hang up and get a bad customer review from a secret shopper, that's like, also just a dick or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, did you, did you, did you solve the mystery beforehand, Justin? No, I think it was kind of just going uh, too quick for me to necessarily be ahead of sort of where they were. But I, when they proposed the NSA theory, I was like, yep, that's got to be it. I, yeah, I was thinking, I was like, yeah, that fully checked out. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think sort of connects to what maybe makes this episode creepy in addition to they're just kind of playing creepy music in the background, like, to be honest. Mm-hmm. But um, but I think it's right at this perfect intersection of sort of just something that's incredibly mundane, and but also something that's, like, incredibly creepy. Because on one hand, we're, mm-hmm. we're very familiar with technology, but, you know, we don't really know how it works. And I think that's, mm-hmm. you know our minds end up filling in some of the stuff. And, and so I think for me, it was kind of like, and I, I'm not even like really like a huge privacy person. Like I would prefer not to be <laughs> spied on, but what do you have to hide? Yeah. I mean, I don't need to like, I like, I get that. That's like a problematic talking point, but like, I'm kind of boring at the same time. It's not, you know, really going to do anything, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I think there is still some kind of creepy being like, Oh, you could just be anywhere and, and your phone's gonna just start recording or whatever. Like your mind just kind of like fills in, you know, what mm-hmm. is, you know, what, what was this person getting from this? Like, you know, you're just, your mind kind of can go different places. I, so I think that's, you know, the way they present it. Another creepy way that they sort of present it is just like in like horror movies. You know, one of the ways that you'll you know that the monster is powerful is that you know they'll introduce a character as being like in some sort of powerful uh, expert or whatever, and then kill that character. So it's like, oh, mm. he killed him, like he must be good, or whatever. Uh, <laughs> and it's the same. That's that's the role that Dave plays in this, where it's like, oh yeah, we called an expert, and the expert's like, yeah, I got this. And two hours later, he's like, I don't got this. <laughs> 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 so yeah it's just it's just i just find it really interesting the way that uh you know by the time you get to the end it's like oh that actually wasn't creepy at all that was ju- it's just like a regular scammer but mm-hmm. while it's going through every it hits all the beats of like something that is, like a creepy thing and also is kind of tapping in like i said to this perfect intersection between this is totally normal, but also this is completely like inscrutable and what's happening and my mind's going to start racing to all these different places. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely. And I really like that NSA one. I was like, oh yeah, for sure. Like 
pure like government like has the power to like tap everything but the incompetency to like not actually send some woman's work phone for no goddamn reason like three months after the fact (laughs) (laughs) yeah i I don't know again it's hard to say because like my mind just wasn't going fast enough to like be at because by by the time uh i could have thought that they were already on to the next theory but i think like subconsciously it's also like is this just like Mm -hmm. a, a a mistake or is this like somehow intentional like is someone like getting some weird like pleasure out of this or something but uh yeah oh oh if it's a pervert thing <laughs> track, no matter what it is <laughs> but yeah i think uh just another interesting thing i guess too is like i'm not I, i'm a little bit familiar with certain computer stuff i'm not an expert by any extent the imagination but i know a little bit about how they work behind the scenes and in general reply all is like a nice podcast to listen to just because of they have like a few different episodes that i would uh, like there's even a couple that i considered picking but um this one i think just worked a little bit better but they have other episodes that kind of fit the same mold of someone kind of in this behind the scenes computer space and but i think just my own sort of experience with how computers work it is interesting to kind of know how in some ways easy it is to do something like this if you have the right knowledge like they say that the person who's doing this is probably someone who used to work at the company i mean no one really has complete knowledge of how everything works but if you know how one specific thing sort of works and if you have like just the right amount of access or whatever Mm -hmm. then yeah sometimes stuff like this can be surprisingly um easy to do which also i think maybe adds to Mm -hmm. some of the creepiness is is, knowing that this stuff is is possible i guess i mean obviously like anything that's like actually real is going to be like scarier than like say like an eight minute like independent short (laughs) film but um you know we can't all have we can't all be the better person at picking our artifacts in the podcast duo (laughs) justin so (laughs) yeah the last thing i was gonna say is just i don't know like I don't know if you get any sort of voicemails. I don't get any that are quite like this, but uh, I do get these like six to ten second what I think are Chinese maybe voicemails. It sounds like they're speaking. Mm. They're definitely speaking some sort of East Asian language. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but now I always like wonder, you know, is my phone somehow being used for some scam or something? Because I get them yeah. probably like once a week at least. They're always like they, yeah, like I said, they're six, seven. They, I think they're usually like six, seven, or like nine seconds or something. And just like, I'm not gonna do a racist Chinese voice. I'm about to, but <laughs> I, mean, I feel like I have them like memorized. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so I don't like I. So I just feel like it makes you think if you uh, if you're like me and get those weird any sort of weird voicemails. I know there's uh, one going on for oh i don't think there's i don't really think there's any validity to this one but people were like saying that there was some scam where they just wanted you to say yes or something and then they would like record oh, it. God, I, <laughs> yeah. I don't that. think that one was real but uh but yeah it just makes you wonder like what other scams could be possible mm-hmm. yeah i've just sort of elected to stop answering my phone unless i have the either the contact in my phone or they leave a message that's uh agreeable yeah <laughs> yeah i think most people are uh similar yeah i just uh just don't uh just don't own a phone <laughs> It'll be fine. anyway that's my artifact for this week alex what is your artifact so my artifact is a sci-fi short film called didalo with the i guess the dust production company that sort of does short indie films the Dalo is directed by Jeronimo Roca and sort of in the vein of like the alien films, it is sort of the end of what seems to be some sort of, well, so I mean, we already have the spoiler warning in effect sort of indefinitely, but I mean, so it's only an eight minute film, so I'm not going to, you don't need to, like, not, it's going to take that long to sum it up, but basically there's just sort of the last lead, uh, Sienna as the, you know, that there's no dialogue in the film the description of it on the underneath of the YouTube upload uh, names are as Sienna tries to survive an infestation of diabolic creatures. Um, but it's good. I mean, I, the reason I want to talk about it was less about sort of the film itself, which I mean, is sort of 
tense, um, but like why this film is tense and sort of the merits of indie films and sort of what makes horror films work. So, so it starts with a woman who has a, you know, sort of already injured in a critically injured hand arm that seems like it's suffering from either severe burns or third degree frost or some sort of infection but she sort of comes across this alien creature eating another one of her crewmates presumably um and her trying to sneak past him the creature to get to medical supplies to heal herself and sort of you know try to survive the encounter and it's sort of her with one hand trying to maneuver this sort of complex healing system and inject herself without you know alerting the her presence of the creature and sort of this back and forth um, whether or not it's going to discover her while it's still, you know, feasting on another kill. Now, ultimately, the alien encroaches, and she is able to... She injects it with a new formula, something that or not necessarily kills, but at least hurts, um, and gets it off her, and she sort of crawls away, seemingly successfully defending herself, but as, like, right before it cuts, we see another of the same creature sort of, like, encroaching behind her, and it sort of cuts out the end to say, you know, title sequence to Dalo on it. I mean, it's sort of the long and short again. Like, it's only, like, eight minutes, so it's not... And, like, not too much happens. I mean, it's very sort of tight scenery and sort of action and things like that. But what I like about sort of indie movies like this and just sort of smaller pieces in horror, which is transcends even sort of the horror genre, is because it's independent, so there's no expectations. There's no sort of... They don't have to be as formulaic. You know, you don't need to set up a sequel. You don't need to satisfy, like, this broad general audience. So they're, like the tension of, you know, will she be successful? How will she be successful? Like, will she survive? Are very real things. I mean, you have to be invested in the characters, obviously, to care, but just, like, you can't necessarily guess how it's going to go, which I think is, like, something that's lost, especially in sort of the, I mean, Marvel movies, especially sort of what comes to mind, but any sort of big budget films. Like, you sort of get the trope of sort of the final girl for horror movies specifically, but just, you know, the protagonist will survive, almost certainly. And if it doesn't, it's sort of somewhat noteworthy and sort of even lost on, like, some horror films, you know, like, you know, there is plot armor regardless. So I liked that. You know, you didn't know what was going to happen. And even though she seemingly succeeded, you know, the implication that she's sort of dead the next second. The thing I wanted to talk about on the other side, which is more to say something about. What you said, I think, either in our movie special or our last Spooktober, the idea of, like, less is more, perhaps, when showing the creatures, because for most of the film, we don't really see the full image of the creature. We sort of get bits and pieces here and there, but there's a couple, like, sort of wide shots of the entire thing, and it sort of, it took me out of it, where it's like, all right, that's just, like, a guy in a suit with a bunch of, like, spikes in it. It's a a well done, like, it's, the effects are good. I mean, there's a lot of, it's a quality production. The creature itself is kind of like, I mean, there's something, there's scary parts to it, but it's sort of, when you sort of see it, the long of it, it sort of takes it out. But I know you said after head watching the first Alien movie that like the effects don't really hold up. And I disagree except for like one, like there's two scenes where it's like the sort of the long pull out and you're just like, yeah, it's just a guy. And it's like a weird, weird how human like in the suit they look. And so I feel like there's like, and it seems like it was pretty cuttable the parts of alien where you like you saw it just like the long shots which is this weird thing of like you don't ever need to see the whole thing i think that's probably true of jaws too shark finally breaches you know you see it and it's like somewhat i mean it's immediately less scary just because you've seen it now finally but obviously practical is always better than computer in my opinion but those are sort of the two big things that i thought about when watching this short film Mm mm-hmm yeah i mean i think uh my big takeaway was also special effects i used to watch this youtube channel that was just sort of dedicated to showing you how to do low budget special effects Mm. and i could sort of recognize some of the same qualities in this not saying that they looked bad but just uh, that you could tell that this is how if you're going to maximize your budget and you're mm. sort of an indie filmmaker or whatever like these are the kind of special effects you do and I, I think for the most part they did a pretty good job i mean you're not now you're not really gonna think like oh this is real blood or that's his real intestines or whatever but it doesn't take you out of it mm. which i think is mostly the goal but i think like you said the the alien monster whatever is a little bit they yeah they probably could have had that be a little darker because mm-hmm. when the less you see of it the, the kind mm-hmm. of better it works mm-hmm. but yeah the couple of scenes where you just sort of see it in full light you can pretty easily tell that it's a suit still like a well done costume oh, sure. but yeah. um but yeah it's it's pretty clearly a suit and yeah even some of the other ways that they set up uh the guy i was looking at some of the comments and people were talking about 
the like the whatever serum thing where mm-hmm. it was there were there were like the the ends of cables or something, like connector cables mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. some sort um and just kind of yeah just like make shifting different things especially for something that's sci-fi yeah um it's like you know th- th- this stuff doesn't necessarily exist so you can kind of cobble together some different things right. and yeah um you start get a sense of how it works um from just how they use it in the story. Yeah, I was kind of, I, I don't really know how, how the serum thing worked. I guess that you had to like, right. when the light lit up, it uh, was activated, right. but I don't really know what it did exactly. Yeah. I guess it was, it healed her, but just ostensibly, or, you know, uh, seemed to perhaps kill the uh, alien, not really sure, but. Um, Blue juice good, red juice bad. Uh, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then, but my other, I guess, semi related takeaway is just that I have been subscribed to this channel for a little bit, but I don't really watch them that often. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of interesting. Like, it's kind of hard. I feel like it's kind of hard to do low budget sci fi. Yeah. Because, I mean, there must have been a lot of money that went into, like, the set and stuff. Right. I don't really know where they are exactly, but it does look like they're on, like, a spaceship or right. some almost. Yeah, they have a lot of videos like that where they're just kind of short, but are weirdly, like, high production quality for... Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't really know too much about them. We'll, we'll probably look them up and be like, some billionaires funded them or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. Um, but, yeah, for what, for what it is, it's pretty impressive that they can put out all this this sci-fi stuff that looks pretty good for for just being these sort of like indie shorts Mm -hmm. yeah and i mean i yeah they they look good and i think i don't know i just generally i think society is better off with more sort of indie pieces of art being made and sort of being you know seen by people so i just i mean anytime like a channel like this or something like you know you introduce me to dust that it's just it's nice it's a good find so, you know, hopefully somebody else finds this and says, I'll check them out. And they like what they see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do wish this one was a little bit longer. Mm-hmm. I think it's, like you said, it seems to be drawing heavily on Alien in some ways. Yeah. To the point where I'm not even sure without Alien, I don't know how much. I mean, it would still make sense, but I think our minds kind of fill in a lot of the blanks because mm-hmm. it's not clear like we don't know what they're doing on the ship how the aliens got on the ship anything like that but i think right so, but i i do i would have liked if there was maybe a little bit of a, of a story mm-hmm. to it rather than just kind of the scene but uh but i did i do like when there's sort of alternative ways to tell a story in this one uh, there's no dialogue Mm-hmm. in it but you still can sort of figure out what's going on so it's, eh, it's an interesting piece of visual storytelling in some ways i mean listen it's spooktober we're just getting a little spooky here <laughs> also that, that piece was also from uh march 2017 for what it's dating is worth for artifact purposes which is to say probably alien covenant stole from this film actually <laughs> But it's like with anything, if you want to really get the real sci-fi horror experience and sort of scare yourself, you know, keep the lights off, put yourself in an unsafe room. All right, Alex, now that we're in the unsafe room, what's on your mind? So I was listening to our old safe room about the UFOs, and you know, I I, I listened back in my naive state. I was I was compelled at the time of recording. You know, I believed you, but then I started really thinking. You know, what if you're wrong? And I know, I know it's my fault. No, I know it's my fault for not starting there. I really should have just. I just really, you really got to think about how you're wrong. And like, what if every goddamn thing this guy's an alien? What if it's all goddamn off planet, man? What if what if they expect you to just shrug it off like you do? What if you're an unintentional fucking CIA stooge doing the work for him, man? Of course, of course, the first thought in the suits that watch you would rather you think that it's aliens and some sort of international crime spree. But what if it's the goddamn cover up for the fucking cover up, man? If it's fucking reverse psychology, you bought hook, line, and sinker. The aliens are the real secret. It's actually a double O fucking mind trick, make you think Area 51 is a joke and not the jewel in the king's goddamn crown. Think about what they're doing in the open, man. Think about what we see and we don't even give a shit about. Fucking nukes, fucking mass sterilization. $1,200 for the goddamn global pandemic. Man, does that make sense to you? $1,200 fucking dollars, that's it? 
and they just keep getting away with it. This is how they give the aliens, man. They just keep spraying bullshit and bullshit against the wall. You don't even notice the little green man hovering over Waswell. I'm not I'm not gonna read the declassified documents. I'm not just gonna take these fucking meds. It's all a goddamn cover up. I'm telling you, the op is fucking everywhere, and they're all goddamn spooks. They're feds on my phone, checking my torrents, and recommending e-girls based on my LinkedIn profile. <laughs> They're filling Olympic pools with all the piss bottles on the Amazon factory floor while Theft Baldzos and Short Fuckerberg 69 each other on a futon made of blood diamonds until they come stock options to satisfy the bottom goddamn line, man. Of course UFOs are extraterrestrial. Trump has so many holes in his fucking diaphragm you think the Swiss made it, and he still has more popular support from the lowest common denominator than Pelosi has pints of artisanal ice cream in the third refrigerator for fucking servants' quarters, dude. I don't care what the quacks say. I'm awake and I'm fucking sleepwalking through this bullshit, and I don't need the jacket to give me. Like, I don't need to keep this fucking story straight. I finally figured it out. I figured it all goddamn out. The corona, the election, the Pentagon reports, the goddamn UFOs. Those crop circles don't come out of nowhere, Justin. You know this. The pyramids are built on slave labor, like the White House, like the generations worth of wealth, like the goddamn economy we're so worried about. I'll tell you why they're worried about the fucking economy. What's the biggest company in the whole goddamn world, Justin? It's fucking Disney, with Walt's head on ice, resting more fucking money than Fort Knox. And what does Disney own? Fox Studios. They also own ESPN, Entertainment, Sports, and Programming News. Fox News? They own the goddamn news, man. We don't hear shit about the UFOs because they're not UFOs. They're no more fucking news, man. They're goddamn IFOs. They identified everything a long time ago. We've had the peace in front of us the whole fucking time. And it's so goddamn obvious that it's actually... I can't say anything else. I'm gonna start beating down my door. I'm surprised you're even let me get this far with it. What's been going on with you, brother? So my unsafe room this week is just how much I hate doppelgangers. I mean, sure. Yeah, you know how everyone has a doppelganger, right? It's just like, yeah. I feel like you've said that before. Yeah, it's like a mirror version of you that like wor- right. lurks, lurks out in the world, and they look exactly like you, talk exactly like you. And I mean, they even have all your same memories because they're constantly stalking you. Like, um, and you know, the worst part is about them too is if they catch you alone, they'll just kill you and replace you, and then everyone who knows you will never know what happened, and they still think they're talking to you, but they're really just talking to this murderous, bloodthirsty doppelganger. Yeah, holy shit! And I mean, they're like a twin. It got dark. (laughs) <laughs> yeah i mean it would be fine too if they just stayed in hell where they belong um well, and that's not offensive okay because they do actually belong there um <laughs> and you know it wouldn't be an issue then if they just you know but for whatever reason you know i mean they're obviously the you know you know story that they, they got banished there they got banished to hell um but now they just want to be out here walking among us lurking in the shadows around corners listening watching you know, just waiting for us to make a mistake, leave a door unlocked, and then they're gonna slip in, sink their teeth into your throat, and then you're never seen again. You know, you know a lot about doppelgangers, Justin. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's just that, you know, they're, they're just so annoying, you know. But sure. Yeah. I guess, I mean, I really, I shouldn't totally blame them, though. I mean, we were warned by the ancients to recite the uh, incantation on the 13th blood moon of the 13th world cycle. And obviously we didn't listen to that. And so these spawn demons are, you know, obviously they're going to seek revenge on uh, the ones that left them forsaken if we give them the chance. So uh, it's kind of, I guess it's sort of our fault if you think about it. Like if you really think about it, we're sort of to blame for giving them this chance. I guess. I don't. Um, okay. I'm, I'm following you. Uh, I was like, have you seen your doppelganger lately? You know, just like something out of the corner of your eye, you weren't quite sure, noise at night, or just like a, you know, itching on the back of your neck, and you know, you, you think it's an itch, but it's really like their hand reaching out for you. Well, I'm looking around now, Justin. I don't know if I can really afford to be thinking about that, but um, is it better or worse if I don't see them recently? Uh, I mean, I feel like you, you know, if you're paying attention, you probably should catch a glimpse of them, I would think. Okay. Um, I guess I'll pay more attention. Uh Um, yeah. It's just weird, too, because, I mean, obviously they, like I said, they look exactly like you, except for, you know, if you do catch them, um, you know, I mean, obviously they're not trying to be seen, so sometimes they'll be in their true form, you know, like with their 
uh, ashy skin and distended veins just popping out of all uh, sorts of like their arms and their neck and those like narrow yellow eyes that are glowing uh, and then the, like, they obviously they have the hooked beaks with the fangs in them as well and okay. if you're real lucky then sometimes you can see them unfurl their wings it's kind of like this you know cape of dry skin or something um, lucky but then at the same time though it's like you might you know step onto you know, a bus or whatever, and then, you know, just you think it's a normal person because then you don't even know that it's a doppelganger because they already, you know, replaced the person. You just have no way no way of knowing that. Yeah. Okay. So oh, You said lucky. Yeah. I mean, the weirdest part, too, is um, I don't know if you know about their uh, master plan. I mean, no one really knows what their master plan is, I guess, but, um, okay. you know, I don't know if you... And any theories. I mean, stuff I've heard, like, that they might want to try and set the Earth ablaze, leaving a hellscape where, you know, only they and their kin can survive, or, you know, they just sort of desolate everything to the point where, you know, uh, we lose all ability to communicate and our connection to the Earth, um, and we just start to see these massive global extinctions of all plant and animal life. Have, I mean, have you heard um, any sort That's of... It's a, a pretty specific guess. I mean, what if they just want to hang out? Do you think maybe they just want to hang out? Uh, I, I, I don't know about that. That that doesn't, you know. Okay. What if I was like, like, so say I find my doppelganger, right? Mm -hmm. Like, could I befriend it? Is that on the table? Do we think? Like, where they just like wanted someone to be nice to them, or? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it'll be pretty. I mean, you could try for sure. Okay, no, should, but so should I try to like find myself alone and then just like bring a snack or something? You know, I mean, yeah, I I, I think it probably would end poorly. But if you wanted to try, I mean, I'm not gonna well, necessarily stop you. Okay, I guess. well, you seem like the expert. So, like, I'm talking about stepping on a bus. How do I know what what am I supposed to? Can I stop one? Can I even see if it's somebody already got doppelganged? What? Yeah. So, it, yeah, it's really hard to recognize them. The only thing that really... I mean, because obviously they they look exactly like you. They sound exactly like you. And since they've been, you know, following you since birth, you know, they, they pretty much have all your memories. So, I mean, really the only thing is, um, is that they are forbidden from saying their own name. Like the name of the person, yeah. So their their doppelgang their doppelganger, right? So your doppelganger couldn't say Alex. You know, if someone asked right. them, you know, what's your name, they wouldn't be able to um, say. And your say doppelganger that. couldn't say Justin. Mm -hmm, that, yeah, that's correct. Okay. So, well, I said my name. I'm Alex, and you. What's your name, bud? <laughs> I mean, you, you think I'm a, a doppelganger or something? <laughs> no, I don't. That's why I'm just asking. <laughs> if I thought you were, I wouldn't ask, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I said my name in the beginning of the show just like I always do. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's no... I mean, we don't need to beat a dead horse and <laughs> just keep saying it over and over again, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> I mean, uh -huh. why, why would we do that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why we would do that. <laughs> I guess I don't know. Uh, 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 <laughs> well, anyway, that's our show for this week. You know, make sure that you uh, see the show notes for a link <laughs> for a link to view the artifacts for yourself. <laughs> uh. Yeah, um, music was produced by Nicholas Pizzuto. Uh, this was a remote podcast recording. <laughs> um yeah you know <laughs> say my name again <laughs> uh rate us five yeah. stars on itunes uh <laughs> follow us on facebook and uh tell a ghost or demon about the show <laughs> and uh join us again in two weeks as we <laughs> as we find two new texts to discuss <laughs> that was a good one <laughs> I'm still Alex. <laughs> see you guys. Uh, uh, see ya. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, I'm going to do this a lot. 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 I'm going to do this a l